What's up, guys? So I wanted to go ahead and do a, uh, a full playthrough of one of the Class 6 level uh, ship salvages, which is currently the uh, the highest level of ship that you can salvage um, in the game. Hopefully, they'll add some Class 7 ships soon. Um, I am right on the cusp of getting the Rank 10 certification, which is the final certification that exists in the game now, which will let me um, get some of the final upgrades and purchase some of the gear, which will save me some money. Um, but, but yeah, otherwise we're going to be doing a class six ship salvage and I wanted to just walk through my process and, and the kind of the major primary steps for how I go about salvaging the ship. Um, in what this method does, at least in my experience so far, um, is reduce the amount of stuff that I am going to be, uh, destroying that's valuable, um, while also not having to worry about min-maxing every little piece of, of the ship. Um, there are certain things that I think are worth kind of destroying and not worrying about and certain things that uh, That are not so uh, let's just go ahead and make sure my laser and my grapple are repaired um, I'm on the open shift mode uh, with oxygen drain turned off um, So I should be able to do this in one shift. Um, it usually takes somewhere between 40 minutes and an hour um, If I'm doing this right, let's go ahead and we'll grab a station popper and we'll go and get started. First thing I'm gonna do is just make sure I have a key for the fuel system. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Thank you for your purchase. And then the second thing is go ahead and strip the outside of the ship of any sensor towers or any of the other bullshit uh, antennas and stuff. On this ship, it doesn't look like there are going to be any. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that this time around. And then open up your scanner and just get a glimpse at what we have for pressurization. So the cockpit, the cabin cargo area, and the reactor are pressurized. Everything else is not. So this should be fairly easy um, and low risk for us to go ahead and uh, depressurize. That's that's all, always the second step um, is, is the depressurization. I've got some ghost sounds in here before because I was messing around and I blew a bunch of stuff up. So that's going to be kind of annoying, but is what it is. Uh, all right, we need two data drives, so let's just go ahead and as we're as we are navigating through, and looks like I spoke too soon because we already have it. Um, usually, I'll try to pick up any loose things, uh, any of the collectibles or whatever, um, as I'm going through and depressurizing each area. So this cargo area is also depressurized. Uh, this cabin area is not. So here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and pressurize this area right now. Just so I can do a quick. Air pressure level increasing. Quick little examination of what's in here. If there's anything floating around like trash or whatever. Um, I can take care of that stuff. now without having to worry about it flying out and smashing on stuff um okay so here's what i'm gonna do so this doesn't have a door that'll shut but i i doubt I doubt that these things will go flying out with the depressurization, but, you know, hey, I might be proven wrong. Actually, never mind, that was like 900 IQ. I've never thought of that until just now. Or I could depressurize that, and then now if I depressurize this... Level I'm sure that'll probably be like, patched out or something at some point. Uh, but normally what I would have done is just uh, un uh, depressurize this area. And then I would have used Z or X to like kind of grab on with my hands. And then hit F. And then, you know, the depressurization uh, would occur violently. But hopefully there wouldn't be much that would be flying out that would cause any damage. Um, so really now it's just the cockpit. And the cockpit really ends up being like one of the last things to do anyway. Um, let's just do the reactor real quick. 
there wasn't anything in there, so there shouldn't be anything that'll come fly Your out. We shouldn't have to worry about it. And now we can get to kind of the the main salvage job proper. Although I am going to let's see, is there anything in here we have to worry about? I don't know if I can see with the scanner. We should probably take care of this now too. Hopefully this doesn't blow anything up or start a fire or anything. Air pressure level decreasing. This is can be really bad if there's like a bottle in here and it goes flying out and then sets this thing on fire and then this whole area just goes up in flames and then you're kind of fucked. Um, but we should be good now. Everything's depressurized and we shouldn't have to worry about any dangerous things happening while we're uh, while we're cutting. At least in terms of pressurization. Get this crap out of the way here. So I'm yawning. Just got up recently. Okay. So, first things first, we're going to try to peel this whole outer shell, the whole entire outer shell, off the ship. That's the next kind of major step. Um, uh, as a part of that process, typically the first thing I'll do is collect the fuses. Um, then the next thing I'll do is clear off any of these green cut guards. Um, and then after that, it's going to be just taking off all the cut points one by one all around the top, the bottom, and along the ends. Um, but... Let's do the fuses now. As you can see, I have my stinger equipped, um, and that's a really specific reason why I have the stinger equipped. Um, one, because it it's nev you're not gonna ever like click and blow something up right away. You can do that with the split saw, but also if you have the, gr the grapple equipped and you go and try to hit F, let's say remove fuse. Right now, if you hit F, and you're not perfectly aligned with something it'll do that force push um so sometimes you can like go remove the fuse and as it's floating go and grab it and instead of grabbing it force push it towards something and have it explode and it, it just becomes a hot mess so i find it just ends up being a lot easier when i have the uh the stinger equipped where i can hit f and not have to worry about obliterating something nearby um so usually there's one up top and there's a couple yeah, I was going to say over in the corner. Let's go ahead and collect these. Try to be quick about it. That one was fast. All right. So now we've got the fuses all taken care of. Um, and then another thing I like to do is grab these little lights, which I didn't realize for a long time you can grab. And I can use these to break the cut points. Sometimes they'll bounce off and you won't be able to do it. Um, Sometimes you'll lose them. Sometimes it'll fly off and explode on something else. But uh, it's kind of the risk that you run doing this whole thing. Just be careful, of, mindful of what's behind it. Um, sometimes you can get lucky and see where it bounced. Oh, like right there. Come on, come on. Okay. So we'll take care of these now. And as I'm doing this, just kind of getting the lay of the land here. There's usually probably one or two other covered cut points. Let's see what else I can grab around here. Either those circular lights, which you can sometimes find, um, or another one of these circuit breaker lights the fuse will do just fine the big risk here is that you don't want to blow up any coolant um, or any of the fuel lines because that's how your sal salvage job will go from being fine and you're just chilling to instantly having a very bad time and everything's exploding and you may or may not die One downside to these little guys is that sometimes they aren't super effective against the cut points. Like right there, I think I missed. I'm not sure what the fuck is going on. But they're also harder to see and kind of grab onto and stuff than I wish they were. I 
one of these days I'll have to find a more efficient way of dealing with with these guys. All right. Now those are taken care of. Let's just go ahead and start dismantling here. Obviously, you want to be mindful of what tool you're using. You don't want to cut through anything accidentally, you know, like do something like that. You're going to have a bad time. All right, let's do the bottom first. I like to, I try not to be too like ADD and all over the place. That's kind of what I've been, I've been trying to really focus on one goal at a time. Um, I just find I make a lot less mistakes that way. So normally I would want to use the saw, and I, and I could probably use the split saw and be fine with it, but every now and then I'll accidentally clip a pipe or something, and again, it just you just very quickly turn into a, having a very bad time. So um, even though it's not quite as fast, uh, you really should get in the habit of trying to be on, you know, err on the side of caution, especially when you're around the fuel pipes, the coolant pipes, um, or the reactor let's get the last few bottom bits out to the top and you'll almost always miss one or two and that's okay the more of these you cut the more space you'll end up giving yourself so it'll just be easier to move around Thing just yeets off something about this guy with the foam uh with the fume foom he says the, with the fume shoot that he just decides to yeet himself into oblivion um so this is one of the only ones that i find i'll need to uh well fuck me i don't want this guy flying away so let's just get that out of the way so don't do what i just did Uh, okay. Should only have a few more cut points to take care of up top here. And then we should be good to peel the rest of this outer lid layer off. Next step, get this guy, these guys off of here, whether they're like sensor towers or nacelles or like communications arrays or whatever the hell. Um, get rid of these guys now. It's a part of the whole outer, outer layer stripping process. One quick look-see here to make sure we haven't forgotten anything. I think we should. I think we should be good to go. Now I'm just gonna essentially be going through back and forth and uh, using a combination of the uh, the grapple and tethers to put all of the these big giant outer layers of metal and uh, the beams 
where they need to go. Most of them are gonna go to the processor. Every now and then there are some things that might have like aluminum chunks on them or they might have vents like this or like this area here, which are gonna go to the furnace. But for the most part, most of these pieces are gonna go processor. Now, also be mindful that uh, some of these outer layers will have tanks of stuff attached to them. Uh, you don't want to go sending them off into the processor while those tanks are still attached. So I usually will hit those last. Um, you can, if you really want, separate the aluminum panels, some of these L-shaped guys that are like half furnace, half processor. Honestly, I don't, I just don't care. I don't think it's worth it and sometimes all those extra cuts you can accidentally cut through into stuff over here and especially if you have up an upgraded cutter so it just, it's not worth it i'll i'll lose the money from sending these guys into the uh into the processor rather than the furnace um i just don't i just don't find the alternative worth it so starting uh, to put things on the barge what i'm gonna do is try to put as much stuff as i can um oops i didn't finish cutting that uh, on this side of the barge because later on with all of the the, the rear end here has fuel tanks and uh, a whole bunch of really explosive scary shit that you don't want uh, when you end up throwing it down to the barge you don't want to be smashing into other things and having them explode and stuff uh, so I try to start front loading the barge first I find that most of the stuff that I put in the barge tends to be kind of down here. So let's get that out of the way now. Usually these things can be a little bit heavy and a little bit lanky and sometimes lead to problems. Um, so I try to pull them away, line them up pretty straight, and then you just force push them in and they, and they tend to go where you want to go. Now we just got the fuel warning, that's the thruster. You can see the thruster has 37 fuel. That's bad. I try to coordinate the uh, being out of tethers with Warning. Tethers depleted. the fuel fill-ups just to make use of this time that you're flying over here. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Thank you for your purchase. Deposit not accepted. All right. Just done with half here. I tend to be kind of aggressive with a lot of this stuff. Um, you 
don't have a huge amount of risk as long as you're really careful where you are aiming um what kind of stuff is in the way like the barge is pretty open right now so i can just yeet the generator and i'm not worried about it actually hitting uh anything down there but once it starts to get a little bit more full yeah you're gonna want to be careful let's go ahead and uh and peel a couple of these fuel tanks off real quick because I want to get this little flanking area out of the way. This guy in here. Now, if you look at the work order, most of your nano carbon is going to come from these outer panels. And then most of the metal that you salvage is going to come from the body of the ship. These, these gray panels. Um, And with the coolant, usually if you have like salvage coolant and salvage fuel, usually you can stand to miss or destroy one of the tanks, maybe two. Uh, but after that, uh, if you destroy more than that, you're probably going to either not be possible or have a really hard time getting those work order parts done. Uh, and also something I forgot while I was setting this up, got a little distracted earlier. Um, I come to the back area here, and usually this isn't jacked up there, but what I will do is I'll take uh, two tethers on each one of these back three sections and mount them like this. This will pull them up um, and out of the way, which should let, uh, it should be a lot easier for you to clear stuff out. And then later we're gonna take these guys and move them over towards those jacks um, and then move them from the jacks into the processors because otherwise if you try to go straight in here at such a shallow angle most of the time they'll just get sucked into the uh, the furnace which is not fun Just go ahead and clear out a lot of these things again you want to be careful over here there's a lot of things that are explosive whether they're pipes or whatever and uh, not to mention the nuclear reactor. So you don't want to just go yeeting everything without really having a good idea for where it's going to go and what it might hit along the way. I almost just threw that in the furnace too, as I'm saying, pay attention. And then here I go, yeeting it into the furnace, smashing something else. Listen, do as I say, not as I do, okay? Everything I'm saying in theory is smart, but that's not to say that I necessarily pull everything off in the best way it's all in the the, the theory okay not the execution sometimes you just feel like eating something and then you want to see an explosion other times you want to play the game properly I just sneezed and accidentally smashed my face into my microphone while trying to grab the mute button as I was sneezing. I'm sure whatever noise and experience you just witnessed probably was just as awkward and embarrassing. Uh, as an awkward and embarrass. Okay, okay, okay. Let's. We're just gonna. Here, I'm doing this in one take, okay? And I'm not scripting it. <laughs> let's uh, let's just give me a pass on whatever my brain just did. Tried to say as embarrassing, and um, we'll pretend like that's a word that only smart people use. I'm glad we're on the same page. 
Thank you. Okay, one more. Where would the other guy go? There he is. Yeah, sometimes I get caught in here. Actually, more often than not, at least one of them will end up in that little corner. So you don't want to th typically throw your your um, spaceship thrusters into the nuclear reactor. That's something you're going to want to avoid. Uh, that was me just demonstrating. You know what not to do, so we can all learn. Send that into the furnace. A couple more pieces. We're almost done here stripping the outer edge. About 20, almost 25 minutes in. So we're making decent time. I mean, you can obviously, as you see, I'm I'm not really being amazingly fast. There's definitely ways that you could be be much faster than this, but uh, but I'd say that this is pretty pretty efficient in terms of the order of operations that we've chosen and how we're going about everything. All right, so gonna take care of the fuel now. Once I do the fuel, this is another one of those steps that you don't want to rush through. You will have a bad time. Uh, once we get, once we take care of the fuel, piece by piece here, making sure that we don't, you know, like put too much pressure on these things as we're grabbing them with our grapple and yeet them into something else because that'll just cause a giant chain reaction. And make sure we don't throw it onto anything explosive or whatever on the barge, because that'll just make a giant chain reaction. And, uh, yeah, I can go from 0 to 60 quick. So this is one of those steps where you just want to take your time. Uh, make sure you get them all in a nice little open spaces. And then once you get pretty much all but one or two of these guys, then you should be done with the fuel. Then we can finish up with the nanocarbon with the outer shell pieces. Um, and, uh, and we'll be well on our way to finishing up the salvage job. So I'm just gonna actually shut up for a little bit, enjoy the soundtrack, and, uh, once I'm done with these major steps here, we can, uh, oh, come back, we can chat some more, yeah?
Off. I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen. Tried to, tried to thread the needle, you know? All right, let's get these, uh, let's get these bad boys, these last chunks down in here. Morning. Refill our tethers, and then let's do the, uh, the next step, which is going to be the reactor. Might as well fill up fuel now while we're here. So, my strategy for the reactor, I actually don't, I don't mess with the coolant. Um, I just find it doesn't necessarily buy me anything. So I'm gonna use the stinger to melt a few of these pieces. bottom area there bottom panel the glass and then these bottom bars here so now that that part's done start taking this outer layers off Usually just need to take these three. Make sure you don't slice the pipe with these panels. What I don't want to do is like start triggering. I, I, I can go in and mess with the uh, the, the coolant and kind of disconnect it and stuff um, from over on the other side of this guy on the ECU, but I just don't think it buys anything. And then I have to go all the way around outside through the ship while the nuclear reactor is melting down. Um, I find the easiest way of doing this is first figuring out where I'm gonna toss it. I'll probably just toss it right here. Um, and then now that I have this nice little doorway, grab on, kind of pull it a little bit back towards me. Grab this guy, tether it here. And then watch as everything fucking explodes. It, it, this doesn't always happen. It uh, it can happen, but doesn't always. And that's that's. Uh, I guess it's good that that happened because what you can see is, you know, like kind of worst case scenario. What what can happen if? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just. We'll toss all this frozen shit. Just get it all out of the way. What can happen if you if you kind of fuck up and um, you know the it, it it'll it'll backfire on you if you uh, don't clear the the pipe there. Sometimes that doesn't manage to happen. Ultimately, I think it mostly comes down to whether or not like one of the sparks or something catches something else Deposit accepted. so maybe my piece of advice is just go and do it the right way which actually before i do that i can show you if you go into the room where uh where the ecu is take this front panel off then there are these three little coolant canisters if you disconnect them as soon as you disconnect the last one now there's no longer any coolant and this right now is when it would start melting down. So then you kind of have to scramble around outside and stuff. You could make a hole in the wall that was like a nice little doorway or whatever. Though those are all those are all options. But ultimately speaking, this kind of order of operations I think still stands. We didn't we didn't damage anything too bad. It's a few panels and stuff. Okay, so 
Um, we got electrical, we got furniture, we got metal, and we got atmosphere regulator. Um, we don't have mechanical, salvage mechanical. Uh, a lot of people wonder what the hell that is. I did for a long time. Um, I find that the door consoles, these guys right here, are the most reliable source of mechanical items. I don't know what other items there are off the top of my head, but you can usually go and find you know, one of these on like every side of almost every doorway. There's a, there's like two or three in each airlock. Um, yeah, so you can easily find 20 or 30 of these things um, on a ship. But, uh, but let's go ahead and we'll start to uh, take care of this area. First thing I do in this process is just disconnect all the chairs because what I'm gonna do is cut out the entire floor and I don't see that very often. Power cell capacitor. Um, and then that'll allow us to have one giant thing to yeet all of our electrical uh, furniture and everything just out through one hole nice and easily. You just want to make sure you don't toss anything into something that can explode and, and if there is anything around that can explode either move it pick it up or whatever you know like something like this let's grab that all right now that that's all done let's go ahead move stuff out of the way and we'll start uh start making our holes in the floor here now i like to get as close as i can to the walls so that there's not like chunks sticking out um And you'll see why later when we start messing around with the, the computer terminals. What I mean by by stuff sticking out. That's what happens when you accidentally force push. I, I really kind of want to bind force push to something else. I don't know if that's a default bind. But it being the same as the uh, the grab seems risky. Problematic. Almost done. This is a little bit time consuming, but trust me, it it will save us a bunch of time. Now, you probably at this point will have like one or two little metal bits still connected that you missed like right here. Usually what I'll do is I'll just kind of fly down into the floor and if it moves at all, then you know that you've cleared it all out. Otherwise, you need to start looking. Oh, yeah, see like right now, that was the last bit. So. As long as nothing's still connected to this, we can just send this whole guy into the furnace. And now what we have is a really nice little portal. For us to just start chucking stuff down in here. So again, this is another one of the things where I'm gonna say it's, it's a risk reward you may or may not end up damaging stuff or losing stuff, but I find not only is it satisfying, but it's just so much faster than being really careful by just grabbing everything here that's floating because it's so light and you can just yeet it. Pull it a little bit, and once it starts making downward momentum, um, just let go. So you can just kind of yeet everything. Be really nice and quick about it. Now you run the risk of, you're not really aiming, right? So you could hit something else, but that's part of the reason why I wanted to move some of the beginning larger bits down towards there, uh, that side. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. So now we're just cranking through, salvaging furniture. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. 
and if you had storage as one of your work orders it, all these crates and stuff you'd be getting work order credit for them all um what do we need for furniture we need seven more so there's like three or four more chairs here and then i'm sure i probably had a few chairs that i yeeted that i missed what is that over there scrap okay um and you usually want to do after you yeet enough stuff just double check every now and then you'll have a few things floating up above that didn't quite make it in looks like i did an okay job And three more bits of furniture. Let's see, there's usually um, one chair in the cockpit, and usually there's a second section right over here. No, not here. Right here. That usually has a few chairs if you need. I usually just do. The chairs aren't worth like tons of money, so I usually do whatever like the. Oh, Whatever the bare minimum is for me to get the uh, the work order, and then uh, the rest of it is just gonna get ended up being kind of scrapped. Um, if you have mechanical, like I said, you can just do the same thing there. The reason why I wanted to get close to the wall was just for that, right? Because you're gonna want to like slide down, and if you have like a, a layer, you know, a few inches of metal here, then you're more likely to smash on something, and. Uh, which will cause a chain reaction and once one of two of these things ends up kind of having a little bit of an electric breakdown you uh you will very often just lose most of them which will fail the uh the work order um so electrical we have electrical we have atmosphere regulator and we have metal so we'll do the atmosphere regulator there's usually one in the main area um there's one in this area if you remember from when we were trying to clear everything out uh then there's some in the air airlocks this is not one this is one of those storage rooms i think there this was an airlock where's the atmosphere regulator weird i don't know if i got it already or if it just doesn't have one. Oh, you know maybe it's just built into the airlock i never really noticed that weird uh, okay so then there's usually one in here depending on the model of ship this side room has a room flanking on the left and to the right sometimes there's a door here with an atmosphere regulator um Sometimes it's just a storage room, but this guy will have an atmosphere regulator and so will the cockpit. And then that should be the last two that we need. Again, just be careful you don't smash anything. Usually there's no, they only give you if there's like six or seven atmosphere regulators, that's when you'll see, you know, there's like five in your work order so there's there's usually they give you some wiggle room to fuck something up but uh, not a whole lot so all right we have electrical we have metal so electrical is like things like batteries and computer terminals let's just eat the computer terminals in there this is one of those things that i'm not gonna lie i just hate dealing with because they're so finicky and so easy to blow up that it's like I try my best but I try to be quick about it because I don't want to spend all day fucking around with these little guys so if I end up screwing it up I screw it up but most of the time I just kind of end up being maybe a little quick and careless and I'd say maybe one out of three I'd regret it but I'd, I'd almost rather 
which is probably not the greatest thing to say. I'd almost rather, like, not get credit for that work order item. Um, at this point in the game, than spend, like, fucking 20 minutes being super careful and still potentially having an unlucky, like, chain reaction of electricity. As you can see, I'm really not paying attention to where I'm aiming, and for the most part, it's it's kind of uh, it's 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 been decently forgiving. Oh, where did that guy go? Okay, so I I think I smashed the uh, side of the barge, which destroyed it. It's okay. This is one of those things that uh, I, I have a feeling might be really inefficient in terms of like cost benefit, the amount of time it takes. Like we're only halfway there and we just spent so much fucking time messing around with, messing around with this stuff. So yeah, like I said, I usually a little bit skeptical that it's worth it. One of the things I'm planning on doing is an actual like in-depth analysis on which items, like how much time it takes to salvage each item type inside of the work orders, and then to figure out how much value you get from it, and then kind of rank them all in terms of cost benefit, time, everything. Because it, it might just be that something like this is, you should just ignore it and just throw most of the shit in the uh, the furnace or whatever. It's entirely possible that that's the case. Like, yeah, this is where it starts to get a little bit annoying, where it's like, now all these 17 more things. Uh, here, first things first, before we finish that, because it'll take some time. Uh, here's what I'll do. Let's start getting this big section going towards the processor. I mean, the, uh, the furnace. Because I don't, as I mentioned before, I don't care about much more of these other things. I don't need them for the work order. And pretty much all of this stuff is going to go furnace anyway. So let's just take the whole chunk. You don't want to do too big of a section with too many items. As right now, the game is still a little unstable enough to where it might crash on you. Um, and there's nothing worse than spending 47 minutes and then having the game crash right when you're pretty close to being done. So I try to, you know, that's this is as big as I'll go. And even this is questionable we wait long enough we're gonna get a huge frame rate dip um, and then one of the things I'm gonna do right now actually let's just melt the whole floor It's so hard to control when that happens. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred.
But so with that, we did all pretty much all of the uh, all of the metal that we needed. Um, so now let's just do the final bits of electrical, and then I'm gonna send everything else into the furnace. Um, that's a little bit of a final step that, uh, again, I'm not sure if it's worth the time. It's not a whole lot of time. Um, ultimately, it really kind of comes down to whether or not it's the you want to run the risk of crashing the game. But it should just be around an hour. Which will be nice for calculating something like per hour, uh, you know, profit, cost, whatever. Nice round number. All right, we only need eight more. Six more. Oh, I fucked up. Here, that's a, one of those cases where you hit F by accident. And it... And you just... You're just gonna have a bad time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Remember what I said, boys and girls? Remember what I said? See, now, if I just skipped all the computers, I would have been done by now. This is where it's like, I don't really need the LT. And some some work order items are done in, like, 10 seconds. Others take, like, 20 minutes. So, if your goal is to just complete work order items, that's one of those ones where the electrical and the wall terminal ones tend not to be super worthwhile. Um, unless you need both because then you're kind of doing two for one but uh still i just find they're more trouble than they're worth because yeah i'm pretty sure i destroyed all the rest of these computers and now i don't have enough working ones to see furnace furnace wall one two three one, two, three, three. Material deposited. Yeah, I don't pretty sure I don't have enough. Rip. Alright, let's split this up into two more chunks and then we'll Send it all onto the furnace. Slash processor. Call it a day. Destroying most of the rest of this shit. As the game's implemented right now, it mostly doesn't matter. Deposit not accepted. Maybe at some point you'll get like demerits or something, and then it'll be worth worth it not to fuck it up, but. Be good to go. 
right around the hour mark. I'm guessing we'll probably be around 10 to 12 million. kind of hope and pray that you're not going to crash the game processing all this shit at once but usually these big chunks of nanocarbon and railings and all this metal and stuff um, is usually a nice chunk of change can potentially be a couple more million in, uh, in profits at the end having trouble looks like it's kind of an awkward ending eat it eat it yes yes good girl oh holy fuck oh no i thought the game was gonna crash <laughs> uh, all right before the end of the day i'll usually go and probably usually just buy a couple of repair kits sometimes i'll buy a utility key we're good to go. Just under an hour. Let's go ahead and end the shift. See how much we made. So 12 and a half mil. Uh, this isn't necessarily the most efficient money-wise, um, but it is uh, just a decent kind of process by which you can tear down these class ship, um, class six ships with uh, hopefully limited collateral damage um but overall we managed to get most of the stuff done wasn't perfect but uh you know gives you guys an idea if any of you have have ever been curious about how how the later game ships look how you take it apart how you tackle some of the pieces um you know that's one way of going about it so hope you enjoyed hope to see you guys soon i got more stuff coming out whether it's tarkov related or shipbreaker related uh, if you want more shipwreck or stuff like this, again, I'm trying to make the community grow. Um, I've been trying to raid a lot of people on Twitch at the end of my stream. And, you know, I, the first few days I was streaming, playing Shipbreaker, uh, and I'd go to be done with my stream. I'd look and there was, I was the only person in the Shipbreaker category streaming. Um, now, these days, I see at least two or three, and a lot of them are started playing because of me. So that's fucking really cool. Um, I would love to to start growing the community and get more people involved in the game. And, uh, you know, theory crafting and talking about ways that the game can be improved and that our strategies can be improved. Um, but if you want to see more, just uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and uh, it means a bunch. So thank you guys and we'll uh, see you soon.